Hello everyone, it's Liddy and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a fun type of video that you may have seen a lot around booktube if you're within the booktube community, so not specifically in the manga community. So there is a booktube tag that a lot of people film in the second half of the year and it's called the mid-year book freak out tag and it was created by Ely and Shami on booktube I'll link all their links down below to credit them and they've been doing it since like 20 2012 so a long time ago over 10 years ago now and pretty much a lot of people have adopted to film their media book freakout tags for the first half of the year so it's basically a book two tag that talks about you know some of the favorite things that you've read in the first half of the year and some of the things that you also might have not enjoyed in the first half of the year as well so I thought I would do a manga version of it because I mostly only see many of the booktubers do this tag rather than any of the manga tubers so i was really excited to share this type of video with a like manga version of it so that's what we're gonna do today hopefully you guys enjoy it it's a little bit of a different video but i did do a poll over on my community tab saying that i would do i would hopefully do something like this and if you're interested in and a lot of people seem to know what the media book freak out tag was so yeah i decided to film it and hope you enjoy it so yeah let's get started on the questions so i'm just gonna go do an overview of how my reading has gone in the first half of the year so the date today is july the 7th i think it's july the 4th not the 7th so it's july the 4th at the moment today so i've read everything up to the end of june so i'm going to talk about everything that i read basically in the first half of the year and overall in the past six months i have read 270 volumes of manga which is pretty good for personally for me i think last year i only read about 100 in the whole year so this year my reading has been really really good i've been trying to tackle my tbrs a lot this year mainly because i have so many <laughs> manga unread at the moment so i wanted to make sure that i am reading as i buy now and being a little bit more picky in terms of what i've been buying so it's kind of been working well well i'm hoping the second half of the year goes really well as well and i get a lot of reading done then first question is so the best book you've read so far in 2024 so the best manga i've read in 2024 it kind of ties between two series and obviously you you guys will probably know what it is but the first one is obviously she loves to cook she loves to eat this is one of my all-time favorite manga series at the moment it is amazing it is so good i've talked about this series at length in a lot of my reading videos as well as my haul videos and things like that but i do also have a top recent reads video where i went in depth about this story so go check that out i'll link it somewhere but this is basically about two women who live pretty much next door to each other in an apartment complex and one of them has a very small appetite but she really really loves cooking and creating new things and then posting it to her like instagram and her name is Nomoto and then she is Kasuga which lives near Nomoto and she has a really big appetite. Nomoto basically invites her over for dinner because she spots um, Kasuga holding like loads of KFC and is like wow that is like a lot of food for, so for one person and then she starts to like think about all these things that she can make for someone with such a big appetite and then so she invites her over and then they end up eating together and it's just really wholesome sweet their relationship obviously develops and it's just one of the most like sweetest healthy relationships I've seen they talk a lot about their feelings and there's also a lot of exploration on sexuality because these two obviously they you know don't they're not within the confines of normal society of you know japan you know in japan things are a little bit more conservative there in terms of lgbtq rights so they're kind of discovering that you know they're not you know into men and there's also a lot of like feminine nuances in this story 
the struggles of being a woman in this society as well and when if you're a woman and you read this there is a lot of things you will relate to this even if you're not asexual or even if you're not like a lesbian so i really really love this series and how it kind of brings together all these themes and then creates such a wonderful heartwarming story it's just i love them so much like you know how much, <laughs> i think i i think a lot of people who have been watching my channel know how much i love this series so if you haven't picked it up already definitely pick it up i know a lot of people also have been picking it up for pride months from from my recommendations so i'm so happy that whoever has picked this up based on the recommendation from me so yeah definitely try this one out so the second series i couldn't choose either one so because i just loved this one as well so much but the second series that i chose for the best read so far in 2024 is the summer you were there this one is so good and I've been talking to some people on the Dudettes Discord about this series and they also really, really enjoyed it based on my recommendation and it was, oh, i just so glad that people are reading this and a lot of people have told me that this was good but when I initially tried it online, I didn't love the artwork for some reason. It didn't like pull me in. Like, I don't know why, but her hair just I didn't really like the way it was drawn for some reason that's a really stupid reason not to really want to read it but she actually has like the same hair as me so I don't know why I'm hating on it but I decided to read it I had the first four volumes and I'm so glad I did absolutely loved it and then I couldn't wait for the releases to come out so I've read the entirety of this online so it's only six a, a six volume series so I was like I need to just finish it and see what happens because it left on a cliffhanger on the fourth volume and I was like no way am I just gonna wait around for these releases because I think the next one is end of July and then it's gonna take so long for the sixth one to come out so I was like yeah I definitely need to know what's happening and it was so good so this story starts off with a girl called Shizuku this girl with the gray hair she is writing a story and a novel and she's basically about to throw it in the bin near the school and then this girl Kari basically walks past her and then talks to her and then she gets jump scared and then drops her manuscript for her novel and then she's like what is this oh it looks like a story and then she basically is like I'm gonna take it and read it so yeah I'll give it back to you tomorrow and she's just like stunned and like what the hell just happened and she is it's very much indicated that she is going through some type of trauma and then when the next day happens, Kaori is Lee approaches Shizuku and is like, I absolutely loved your story. It was amazing. You have to keep writing and you need to write a new story. And then Shizuku is like, no, I'm not going to write a story. I wanted to stop writing and this was going to be my last like manuscript that I ever wrote. And then she's like, no, you can't give up. Your writing is so good. And then she was like, so that I can help you create a new story. Let me be your inspiration. So I will become your girlfriend for the summer. And then you can write about our like love and the stories about it. And then she's just like, what the hell? That is so weird. But they end up starting to like hang out and then there is like some underlying themes that end up going on like there's a secret that she has as well where it kind of like sprinkles in a little bit of it and then she also has some quite like deep trauma about it and then you obviously end up finding out what it is and then there's also a secret about Kauri as well that you will later find out and it's it's really good like Oh, I don't know how to explain it without spoiling it, but I'm going to spoil a little, bit, a little bit of the emotions that I felt while reading this because I know some people find talking about how I felt can be a little bit of an emotional spoiler. So I'm going to talk about that, but I'll put spoilers up here. I cried so much reading this series. Like I started crying from volume four onwards and every volume I was bawling my eyes out. Like, And the last volume oh my god I was crying so and it wasn't just like a few tears I was 
bawling my eyes out and then my husband came in to the room and was like what is wrong like why are you crying oh my gosh and he was like consoling me because it was a really like proper cry i was like it's this maggot and he was like oh my god and then he was just like hugging me and stuff and it was so funny because i was just like that's how like crazy crying i was over this series i it's just so good so it's basically quite emotional it talks about you know trauma and like friendships and also you know the relation relationship between these two also develop and it's just it's just amazing the story is really really good i highly recommend it if you're looking for a little bit more of an emotional read something that makes you really think and i just loved it so much so this is definitely like one of my top favorites at the moment for sure it's so good so i want everyone to also read it and experience the story i think i rambled on way too much already on the first question but let's get into the next one next one is the best sequel you read in 2024 and that is the yakuza's guide to babysitting so i started reading this this year and i absolutely love this series i bought so much merch on this series already on neokyo and it's so good so basically it's about a guy called kirishima and he is part of a yakuza clan and this guy is actually the head of the yakuza and he has a daughter called yaika and he needs someone to look after yaika so he appoints kirishima his kind of right hand man to become yaika's babysitter and so as the title suggests they kind of it kind of follows their like daily lives together within this yakuza family and also basically playing with her and just like how she's obviously shy at first but then like they warm up to each other and she becomes a very important person to kirishima considering he is like really well known for being cold and like a cold-blooded killer within this yakuza realm and he is his reputation is like batshit crazy he doesn't like ever like show any emotions he literally just gets a job done without any like remorse and he's just like that so it's really i love characters that have that kind of they're really cold moody but when they're in the presence of like a small child or they get closer to you know these like cute children like they soften up and they become like really protective of them and it's just so cute and this volume especially it also made me cry like <laughs> I, I think it's just the thing about books that make me cry have hold a really special place in my heart because that means that I felt so much emotions for the story and the characters and that's a good sign for me so I basically cried because it wasn't like sad or anything it was just very emotional and just wonderful it's really good I recommend it it's just fun as well and if you like like small children like reading about children and their adventures in manga then you'll definitely like this one and yeah it's one of my top favorites as well so far in this year i've really found some amazing gems this year so far and i'm excited to see what else i can find but definitely try this one out and then new releases that i haven't read yet but have come out i don't really keep up to date a lot with new releases anymore because i find that they become cheaper as the longer they're online for so i'm not like a huge new release reader and also i have so many things to catch up on i'm not really up to date on a lot of series but some of the new volumes of manga that i got recently that i need to catch up on is I see your face turned away. This one is a new shoujo series and I think it focuses on a group of people and unrequited love. I picked this up at MCM Comic Con and I still haven't read it yet so I need to get to that but it's fairly new. I think it came out in either May so pretty new for me. And then another one is A Sign of Affection volume 8. I don't know when this one came out either but it's pretty new to me so I need to catch up on this i do really love this series and it's continuously kicking off in the shoujo community everyone loves it i think it's really good too so yeah and then of course i need to catch up on moon on the rainy night this one i think is also came out in either early june or may so i need to pick this one up i really really have been enjoying this series as well this one is also a high school gl series 
really really good love it and then another one that i don't know if it's new either but we can't just do plain love volume three is also one that i need to catch up on this one is a workplace romance a little bit spicy as well so yeah i need to catch up on so those are the new releases and the next question is most anticipated release of the heart next half of the year so it will definitely be obviously the summer you were there volume five i am gonna reread that series of course as they come out because it's just so good it was an emotional roller coaster so we'll see if i will get to it also i'm really looking forward to free room volume 11 volume 10 ended on a cliffhanger it was really good i actually ended up reading parts of it on the jump app because i had to it ended on a cliffhanger this arc particularly i'm really enjoying it's like really there's like really fast paced moments and obviously free run if you've read it there are moments where it's like really fast paced and then obviously it slows down a lot but around volume 10 is when it gets really fast paced and it ends on a cliffhanger so i had to like read ahead but i'm really looking forward to volume 11 to come out and read that and the second question is biggest disappointment this year and yeah this one is probably gonna upset a few people but i have two different types of series for this one and the first one is sakura hime this one is by arina tanemura which is a really dearly beloved shoujo mangaka in the community i think everyone has read an arina tanemura before if they're into shoujo manga there is Full Moon, there is Gentleman's Alliance, there is like Kamikaze Kaito Jin, which a lot of magical girl stuff, but this one was so bad. Like I really I really tried to read this a while ago, ages ago, and I just couldn't get into it. And then I read it, read the entirety of it for Magical May, and it was a slog, honestly. I really wanted to get through all 12 volumes because you know i had it on my shelf for so long but it was so bad like it was so disappointing to me first of all it's like very confusing sometimes the plot the way it like jumps back and forth in terms of like the plot there's a lot of characters in here as well that come up and there's just a lot of like a love relationships triangles it tries to be like very edgy in terms of there being like betrayals as well but then it's a little bit like Sakura Hime is just like very forgiving of like the betrayals that she's been through and there's also a lot of like backstory and between the like different people and then there's a lot of miscommunications as well and the love is just was really cheesy in my opinion I didn't like connect to any other characters or feel for these characters or really like ship them I feel like maybe I'm too old for these type of series now maybe that's why I didn't enjoy it as much but it was just really sad to see that I didn't enjoy it yeah it was not good and then the second one also gonna probably ruffle a few feathers but Tami Sama Kiss yeah I know like I collected the entirety of this when it was coming out restocking again so I bought a lot of these volumes for a little bit over retail price because I was impatient and then I should have just read the first few volumes first it was because this series is so very much hyped in the shoujo community and I wanted to be a part of that and a lot of people were reading it ages ago when they were a lot younger and maybe that's my issue that I didn't read this when I was in my teens because I feel like I probably would have enjoyed it a lot more during that time but personally I didn't find the relationship that great I didn't find Nanami amazing I found that she was very much a love sick girl because we find out early very early on that she starts falling for this guy what's his name tomoe so he is basically like a shinshi who serves the kamisama of the i think temple that they are living in and she becomes homeless because of her father's debt and then she gets lured into this temple area by someone called mikaje or something i don't really remember his name and then she ends up becoming the kamisama of that house and then he is the shinshi who serves her and then it kind of follows like a lot of hijinks that 
go on in there with like lots of like shin- shin- shikigamis and spirits and things like that. I just didn't find it really fun. I'm not sure if I'm really into like all this like Shinigami stuff because I didn't really like Demon Prince of Momochi House which is very similar to this and I thought Kakuryu was good but I didn't like love it that much so maybe it's just me not really into this kind of spiritual realm things but I didn't really love it. I didn't really love the relationship. I don't find it heart-wrenching or heart-throbbing. It doesn't make my heart beat. And I read up to 16 volumes of this. So I feel like I gave it a fair enough chance for me to really enjoy it. But I really wanted to love it. Honestly, like I bought all 25 volumes. So obviously I wanted to love it. But I'm just telling you my thoughts that this was a disappointment. Sorry. And the next question is your biggest surprise and that is definitely my girlfriend's not here today. This was so good. Like I didn't really expect much because I heard that the storyline and the themes are a little bit sus in terms of like very toxic. There's a lot of shit going on that would be really crap in real life and yeah but I loved it. It was addicting, so addictive to read. It was kind of like watching a car crash happen and you just can't take your eyes off it. You know it's like really bad, but you just keep looking and watching and wanting to read more. I loved reading this first volume. So I don't know if I loved it because like I felt bad about loving it so much. So I guess it could be kind of like a guilty pleasure where I shouldn't love it but I did and a lot of people are gonna be like that is a train wreck but I like it I can't, I can't help it but this one is a high school GL series and there is a specific theme in here that a lot of people are not gonna like and I will spoiler here if you don't really want to know anything about it before going into it but spoilers it has NTR which is basically cheating so if you're not into that type of theme then I would definitely not recommend it. I also don't like themes of cheating in my manga at all but I don't know why I love this so much because it was just so entertaining. You know when you like hate a theme obviously and you don't condone it in real life but you really enjoy it in a more fictional sense and how it's just so entertaining because it's just grips you in terms of like where the story is going to go and then you're constantly like worried about what's going to happen and it's just done so well that not well as in like the theme but the story just flows so well that you just keep reading and then you're at the end of the volume and I really enjoyed this first volume so much that I ended up reading everything that is out already online and I think there's about four or five volumes online and it just gets worse and worse the characters are awful all of them are unforgivable in my opinion there's no condoning the behaviors that they do in any any situation but it was so entertaining and so gripping and I love it. Like the journey was amazing. So I'm definitely going to keep collecting this and continue reading it once they, you know, read it again when it comes out uh, physically because that's how much I enjoyed it. So this was definitely the biggest surprise, especially because I knew the themes that you can kind of tell what the theme could be. And obviously I'm a bit like, this is not something that I would usually enjoy but I did and I don't think I would recommend it for anyone who's trying to get into GL because it very much is a train wreck, toxic, all the characters are awful people. It's really pretty too, like the artwork is stunning. I love it, my guilty pleasure. <laughs> So the next one is newest favorite author and personally I haven't read like multiple volumes of a series 
of the same author much at all. The only ones would probably be like Ayazawa, but she's not really a new author to me. So I just kind of picked up a volume that I thought was is quite new in terms of release and I do really like their art style so I ended up picking them and that is The Fragrant Flower Blooms with Dignity. I read this on the plane because I went to the Netherlands uh, for work and I picked this up in one of the bookstores so a book shopping in Netherlands is on its way so stay tuned for that but I picked this up in one of the stores that I went to and I read it on the plane and I really really loved it like it's definitely a new series to me i've never heard of sakura mikami i've not read anything of them before and this one was really really cute and it's basically about two schools that are literally right next to each other there's like chidori high school and Kik kikyo girls high school so one's a boys all boys and one's all girls and they both kind of have really bad reputations of each other so the the girl school is like really prestigious and usually people are, who go there are very rich the girls are very prim and proper whereas the next door chidori high school has a lot of delinquents or is like dubbed as a delinquent school that a lot of people have like misconceptions about but these two end up meeting by coincidence because he helps his mom work in their local bakery and then she goes there often to eat lots of cakes because she likes sweet stuff and they kind of cross paths together and end up forming a really cute friendship it's really cute it kind of feels I think they dub it as like a kind of high school Romeo and Juliet meets like quirky cute shoujo story so yeah I really like this I'll definitely check out more of her works now in the future if they have released anything before because I really like the art style it's very cute and the story is developing in a really nice way so I'm excited to continue the story all right and the next question is newest fictional crush so apart from Kirishima from Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting because I'm in love with that character so much I also am in love with Kifuri from Witch Hat Atelier. He is, he has white hair and blue eyes. So kind of like a very much my kryptonite. He's also a little bit mysterious. He kind of has a kind of morally gray carried background character about him where there's something that he's kind of hiding that you don't really know about but then on the outside he's very go lucky very happy very positive so that's what I really like about his character a lot and which I tell you is also amazing if you haven't read it already also I really like Taki in my girlfriend's not here today she's manipulative awful person but she intrigues me so much and I really like her a lot. And the next question is newest favorite character and I'm gonna go with Sugumi from Megumi and Sugumi. This is a Omegaverse BL that I read during Pride Month and really, really enjoyed. I'll definitely talk more about it in my recommended reads video that I'm planning for BL and GL. So stay tuned for that one as well but he is so funny he is basically like he's supposed to be like a delinquent but he goes around protecting other people from alphas because this is an omega verse he is an omega as well but he is just so silly and he's basically always trying to like fight people fight like everyone because he is just he's trying to not succumb to his animal instincts he's just really cute though the way he acts out a lot of people find him immature from what i read in the reviews but i find him really funny i find him really cute so i really like him in terms of character you can see how cute he is eating his cake like what the hell he's so cute but yeah definitely has to go to tsukumi from this series and the next question is book that made you cry so obviously I have a few already that I mentioned but another one that did make me cry was Unholy Blood this was surprisingly more emotional than I anticipated uh, this one was actually gifted to me by Yen Press and Eyes Press and I loved it so much I also have a reading vlog of this on my channel where I read a bunch of volume ones so definitely check that one out but this one was so good it's basically about a pure blood vampire called Haiyan and then she has a family like a found family within this church and she kind of tries to protect them and wants to live a normal life without 
being her vampire self so she goes to school and things like that but then something happens and then she ends up having to take on her vampire form because obviously she's a lot stronger in that form to seek revenge on some things that happened to her so it was just an emotional roller coaster. the art is beautiful as well and i highly re recommend this series if you like very kind of emotionally charged protagonists love for found families and also supernatural elements in an urban setting it's really good i highly recommend it so the next question is book that made you happy and i've got days on fez this one really made me feel nostalgic about kind of staying out late with friends and going out and it was really fun to read so i really enjoyed this and i really like the way the friendships are and how like two different friendships are coming together and it's just really good it's basically a slice of life about festivals and there's these people who are newly discovering festivals and enjoying them and it just felt really fun like good summertime vibes for sure and it just made me really happy to read and I'm excited to continue the next series for these ones as well. And the next question is most beautiful book you bought this half of the year and I've got a few and I'll show you. It is Yakuza Fiance Volume 7. Look how stunning it is. And then I've also got Kaiji Girl Caramelize Volume 7. It's another volume seven, but this one is stunning as well. Look at that. I also need to continue this one as well. And then I've also got Apothecary Diaries volume 10. Mau Mau looks absolutely stunning in this particular volume. Love it so much. So yeah, those three are probably one of the prettiest covers, in my opinion, that I've bought this year. And the next question is, what books do you need to read by the end of 2024? And that is definitely... A few of them I have a lot of backlog that I need to read and I've kind of I've kind of looked at series that I need to read that I've had on my shelves for some of the longest time the promised neverland is probably one that I really want to read I bought the box set probably sometime last year and I still haven't read it yet and the Oran High School Host Club box set I also have and I definitely need to start reading that one. I bought that when I first started BookTube, uh, MangaTube early back last year in October. No, last, last year in October. It's definitely something that I need to put on my TBR for this year. And then another series I really want to get through this year is Banana Fish. A lot of people have been reading Banana Fish lately from what I can tell on the socials. And it has a very big fan base community. A lot of people love it. And they also talk about how emotionally draining it is. So I'm not kind of prepared for that. But I do want to get to it at some point. So those are like the big three series. And like all three of them are pretty long in terms of volume count. Like Oran High School Host Up is 18 volumes. Promise Neverland is 20 volumes. And Banana Fish is like 19 volumes. So that's a lot of books that I need to read. So I'm just going to focus on those three. Hopefully for the end of the year. And I'll probably do a check in to see if I actually do end up reading them by the end of the year. But we shall see. And then the last question, finally, sorry, it's been a long video, I think, already, but it's your favorite booktube community member. And for me, I'm going to talk about the manga tubers, obviously, because this is a manga version. And I'm going to talk about, obviously, the dudettes, which is Himaka, Kate Tins, and Geeky Dreams. They're both three creators from the UK, which I discovered when I first started wanting to try MangaTube and I found that there was not as many UK MangaTubers on YouTube so it was a little bit hard to find a lot of the ones that were quite like well known and bigger were US creators so it was really really amazing and I was so happy to find some fellow UK creators so that's why I really enjoy their videos and it, they all three of them inspired me a lot whilst I was starting out MangaTube so I am really grateful to 
those people of course and then I'm also going to shout out some creators that I really enjoy watching in general so I really like watching Prof Otaku I think his energy is really great and he makes some really good videos very informative I really like that and then I also really like Manga Captor they have a really nice cozy chill vibes as well yeah so definitely check them out I'll have all their links down below of course and all their channels and stuff so that you can check them out as well that was it for the media book freakout tag i hope you enjoyed seeing kind of like the manga version of it and seeing all the manga that i really liked and also some of the biggest disappointments i felt that i had when reading for the first half of the year i'm really excited to see what other amazing volumes of manga that i start to enjoy and also discover in the second half of the year really looking forward to that and definitely let me know what your favorite read so far has been in 2024 and what your biggest disappointment has been as well i'm always really excited to hear about all your opinions on your favorite mangas as well but yeah, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more manga content if you haven't already. I've been posting videos weekly every Sunday or Friday, between Friday to Sunday depending. I've been trying to post on Sundays recently because I've just been liking that schedule a little bit more. But yeah, definitely check all my other videos out as well. I talk a lot about some of the series that I've been enjoying throughout the year. So yeah, and I've got loads of fun videos coming as well. So definitely tune in for those. Hope to see you in my next video as always. And thank you for the support. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.